I have moved about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. The Creaking Door. Take pleasure in presenting... The Creaking Door. Good evening, friends of the Creaking Door. The Creaking Door is opening. So do come in. Come, come, my friend. But a word of warning. Once you've crossed the threshold, don't look over your shoulder too quickly. The things you would see would stay with you for the rest of your unnatural life. <laughs> signboard groans in the wind. They say the place is haunted and strange things happen there. But there is nothing supernatural about the police inspector. He sits in an upstairs bedroom talking to the lady of the house. Mrs. Barton, exactly when did these uh, manifestations first take place? I don't expect you to believe me. Nobody will believe me. Certainly can't expect the police to inspect us. Oh, we aren't hired to convince Mrs. Barton. Just tell the story your own way. My husband's name was Don. Donald Barton, if that was his real name. We traveled miles to see this hotel. He was captivated by it, or said he was. He's worked very hard since we took the place. And uh, the hauntings, or whatever you'd like to call them? They began the very first day, Inspector. I found out that they'd been there all the time, from the earliest days. Hmm. What form did they take? Uh, ghosts? Uh, spooks? The old wine cellar was haunted by poltergeists. Noisy ghosts. Earth spirits, some call them. You'd hear them rolling barrels down there. There was crazy laughter. Once we found iron. Little bits of it. Still smoking. Yes, smoking iron thrown all over the place. I see. Now, Mrs. Martin, suppose you tell me what happened from the time you woke up on the day of my first visit here. All right, Inspector. My husband went to market early to buy provisions for the hotel. He got back just as I woke up. I remember putting on a dressing gown and picking up my slippers. It was then I noticed that there was mud on them. Good morning, Zilma. Awake at last, eh? Oh, I had a rotten night. Oh, I suppose I did, Don. I hardly slept. Don, look at my slippers. All covered in dried mud. Oh, yes. Well, that's odd. It must have been wet mud, I suppose, when somebody used them. But who? Oh, it was raining last night. <laughs> who do you suppose could have used your slippers, Selma? Oh, no. You... You mean me? Uh, I, I suppose I did. I, oh, Don. Don, please, let's get away from here. No, this is far too good a little business to leave, Selma. It isn't. You know it isn't. Never like this before. Before? Before what, sir? I never walked in my sleep or, or picked up things in the garden. Never. Not until I came to the hotel. It's, it's haunted, Don. I know it is. Oh, nonsense, darling. Now, you'd better see a doctor. No. No. You remember last time? Yes. So what? You picked up a dead frog in the garden and put it in your pocket. It was horrible. Slimy and cold and dead. Oh, and... And I was so horrid to you, Don. Oh, that doesn't matter. I suspected that you and Beatrice... Yes, I know, I know. Poor Beatrice. I may have little taste, my dear, but I don't have affairs with the staff. Would you swear it isn't true? That you've never been 
friendly with Bertha? Oh, please, dear. Then get rid of her. You forget this pub is supposed to be haunted. I just can't get stuff. If I if I asked you nicely, Don, would you get rid of Beatrice? No. She's done nothing wrong. She works very hard. She doesn't want the earth. And she is very pretty. Oh, in a coarse peasant fashion, I expect she is. Oh, is it me, Emma? Am I going mad? No, of course not. No, don't say such absurd things. What's that? Fire brigade, please. Ambulance. I'll open the curtain. Have a look. Oh, it's an ambulance. Stopping outside Mrs. Flowers' place. I hope she isn't ill, even if I don't like her. Oh, come, come. She's an old lady. She called me a witch. I suppose she's seen me tramping around in my nightgown. Something like that. Oh, well, Thelma, sleep in if you want to. Now, I'll have to get down and start breakfast. That is me. Okay. Yes, sir. Good morning. May I see you, Miss? Well, see you, then. Are you a commercial traveler? No, I'm not. I'm a police officer. Oh, you better come in then. This is Mr. Barton. Don. He says he's a police officer. Oh, thank you. Good morning to you, sir. My name is Hunter, Inspector Hunter. Good morning to you. What a very appropriate name. A hunter of men, eh? I suppose so, sir. Might have a word with you in private, sir. Oh, of course you can. Uh, come through to the parlor, Inspector. Right. Through here. Thank you. Excuse me, Darcy. Thank you, sir. I've called for a little information, if that's possible, sir. I'm sorry to say Mrs. Flowers, the lady who lived opposite you, was murdered last night. Murdered? Mrs. Flowers? But why should anyone want to kill Mrs. Flowers? She's a... She was an old woman. Robbery? Well, that's just it, sir. No. I called to ask if you knew of any enemies who might have disliked Mrs. Flowers enough to kill her. I don't think she had an enemy in the world. Oh. I suppose you saw nothing suspicious last night. No, Inspector. I go to bed early. I have to be up for the market early in the morning. Mr. Barton, I believe your wife had a quarrel with Mrs. Flowers. Oh, hardly a quarrel. Well, they had words. I think my wife called her an interfering old busybody, and she called my wife a witch. I see. Uh, what was the occasion of this exchange of words? I believe some of the local men had been having rather a noisy party in the saloon bar. Mrs. Flowers called in the next morning to complain. That's all there was to it. Could I talk to your wife for a moment, Mr. Barton? She's sleeping. She was very tired last night. Uh, Would you mind terribly calling back later in the day, Inspector? No, 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 not at all. No, it'll be perfectly all right, Mr. Barton. Oh, thanks. I don't suppose she'll be able to tell you anything. It was only the briefest of women's quarrels, not really bitter. Mm -hmm. Certainly not any excuse for strangling Mrs. Flowers. Very well, sir. I'll be over later. Oh, good. This way, Inspector. All right. I just thought your wife might be able to help me. But, uh, goodbye for now, sir. Oh, all right, right, Inspector. See you later. Oh, what did he want? Mrs. Flowers across the road was killed last night. Killed? Murdered. No. Oh, we're not even old beds that were not... Oh, shut up, B. Of course we are. I'll have to go up and tell Thelma. Oh, she'll just go on weeping. Wait, Bob. And because she's my wife, and somebody's got to tell her. He told me then. I suppose he gave me good advice. But I couldn't see it at the time. Of course, I was shocked by the murder of poor Mrs. Flowers. I didn't like her. And she'd called me a witch in a spiteful tone. But I, I never hated her. I was remembering the mud on my slippers. Remembering the dead frog and the other incidents. I was frightened, Inspector. Especially the first time you spoke to me. Uh, now, Mrs. Barton, you say you knew the dead woman only slightly. That's right, Inspector. But on one occasion, she called you a witch. Yes. There was some sort of noise in the hotel and Mrs. Lars objected to it. Mm. Was she always so objectionable? Oh, no, no. Inspector, she was an old woman. Rather crotchety, that's all. Mm, I see. Now, I've heard this place is haunted. Oh, country people do talk. Uh, they exaggerate. But I'm told you said the place was haunted. Oh, no. You must be mistaken. Mrs. Barton, tell me, please. 
Do you walk in your sleep? No. Oh, no, never. I see. I rather thought you did. No, no, of course not. Have you been told to say all this? Oh, no. How, how could you... Well, that's be... all right, madam. That's all right. It won't make much difference in the end. But tell me, have you seen or heard any unusual things recently? Well, yes. At night, a, a strange figure, hmm? the shadow of a strange figure, has crossed the blind quite often. What kind of figure? The figure of a woman. It has a tall headdress with the figure of the crescent moon on top. The first time I saw it, I ran to the window, but the street outside was empty. Oh, just a trick of the light, surely, Mrs. Martin. Perhaps. But you see, I live on the first floor. Nothing, nothing could throw a shadow there. Any arm? I don't know, I'm sure. Of course, the Mrs. here didn't like her. Mrs. Barton? Oh, I don't expect there's anything in that, though. Mrs. Flowers called Mrs. Barton a witch, didn't she? That's right, she did. Tell me, Beatrice, uh, does that mean anything to you? Oh, I know, it's just a matter of speaking. You've never heard tell of a, of a coven of witches in the neighborhood? What an imagination you've got. <laughs> coven of witches, whatever next. Uh, Beatrice, just a minute. Oh, sorry, I'm very busy just now, sir. Oh, indeed. Too busy to help me solve a very strange murder. Feeling any better, Zelda? Just this ghastly headache. I am sorry. Oh, Dot, am I mad? Am I imagining things? Oh, what a question. Of course not. You you aren't too fond of Beatrice? Oh, don't start harping on that again. Now, let's make it quite clear. No, you're not, Mad Selma, but you're eccentric and neurotic, if you like. But so are thousands of people. You think I'm neurotic because I saw something on the stairs? A grey hooded figure? It was your imagination. The mud on my slippers, that was real enough. Did you get rid of the mud? No. Why should I? My dear girl, the woman across the road was killed. Your slippers have mud on them. You see weird shadows at night. Now, please, don't let the police get suspicious. Why not? Because they haven't much sense and they're like bulldogs. Try explaining to them the difference between a neurosis and a psychosis. So you think I killed her? Of course not. Why did she call you a witch, by the way? Oh, there's supposed to be a group of witches somewhere near here... A coven, I think they call it. Don, tonight's Sunday, isn't it? Yes, it's my fishing night. Don't go tonight, Don. I'm sorry, I have to. I promised the boys. You mean you promised the girls? Yes. Oh, no, not that again. I'm sorry, Don, but, but please, don't go tonight. I must. Sorry, Thelma, but I can't tell Johnny and Sam, the chaps I go with at this late hour. You left it far too late. I'm not mad and I'm not a fool. I've been having you watch, you... Don. How long has this been happening? All last week. Someone from the private detective agency. Oh, you fool. What am I... I know you've been seeing Beatrice. I suppose I can't blame you. She's prettier, younger, too. So you've been spying on me. I had a right, Don. I'm your wife. Beatrice isn't the only woman under your spell, is she? Tell me, how much do you know? Enough. Why did you marry me? Money. I had to have this place. But it loses money, Don. Everybody This says... is the crown and mitre, built on the site of an ancient Cistercian abbey. The abbot was named Cantior. That's where the name comes from, I think. Crown and mitre. But I still don't see... Don't why... you? The figure you saw on the stairs. 
The red hot lumps of metal that fly across the cellar. The bones spilled from nowhere. Don't you even recognize poltergeist phenomena? You've never seen a ghost before. The place is haunted. I know that. I felt it all along. My dear Thelma, why do you think I wanted the crown and mitre? I never could understand. Witches never exist alone. In every coven worshipping the dark prince who existed before your silly beliefs, there is a man. Call him a wizard. Oh, ridiculous. You can't believe that old nonsense. You've had me watched, you must know. I am master of a coven of witches here in this village. Witches are only foolish women pretending... Possibly. Or fool them. They are bound forever to the rule of the old dark prince. What you mean is the devil. Why don't you say it? The devil. You know nothing of the mystery. Mystery, you call it. Please, Don, give up this madness. I beg you. Please, will you? Give it up. It's madness. Let me tell you what I shall do. Tomorrow is the night of the new moon. You talk to me of madness, but it is you who will become mad, not I, Thelma. Become. You are mad. You are suspected of murder. The mesh is closing round you. You will spend the rest of your life cooped up as an idiot in an asylum. Or in jail. I can tell them, Don. I can say what really happened. Will you tell them that I am the master of a coven of witches, that you have done nothing? Will anyone believe you? I think they will. It might be easier to close your mouth forever. You dare not, Don. My death will come too soon after hers. After the death of Mrs. Flowers. You couldn't explain it. You killed yourself in remorse. Why, you... you... Tonight, the coven will attempt the feat I have set them. I shall lead them in the task of raising the spirit of the long-dead abbot, Cantio. What are you saying? Yet his ghost walks with the poltergeists who throw hot rocks and burning irons. I know what I'm saying. I shall raise that lonely gray ghost and set it against you. You will face me in the morning, my dear. Your reason gone. I shall be your sorrowful husband. Inspector Hunter, he won't... He won't he, won't he. Your history, everything about you points to you. Besides, they think you killed Mrs. Flowers. You did? Of course. She knew too much. Her niece, young Lisa, was one of our initiates who failed to stay the course. Lisa told what she knew to her aunt, the Flowers woman, who thought you were a witch. I had no alternative but to kill her. But I was going to say, I have power, my dear wife. Power. Power I shall wield tonight. And all with your money, my dear. You inhuman swine. Do... Look at me. Look at me. Look into my eyes. Repeat after me. I am Thelma. I am Thelma. Thelma means that there is only one law. The law is do as thou wilt. Repeat it. I am Thelma. I am Thelma. Thelma means... Oh, no. No. Uh, Mrs. Barton. Who are you? Beatrice. Go. Please, go away from me. Listen, Mrs. Barton. You are one of my husband's followers. Never. I thought it was a sort of joke. I thought it was all a big deal. This dressing up as books and all that. But it isn't. Oh, can I trust you? Look, Don's down there in the cellar now, where they used to have the old abbey. He's carrying on something shocking. I think somebody called Diana to listen to him. Diana, goddess of the moon. Here, you're not another of them, are you? Of course not. I've read about these things, that's all. Well, that's a good thing. <gasps> Look! Now you know why I'm half mad. You see that shadow? The shadow at the window? It's a woman with something on her head. Passing like a woman's funeral. Diana, the moon goddess. Oh, help us. Oh, oh, look, it's the old abbot. No. He said, Don said, it's growing stronger. The abbot. Abbot, can't you? If you are a good man, give us strength. Please, I beg you.
come in. Hello, Mrs. Barton. Hello, Beatrice. Hello, Mr. Andrew. Oh, Mr. Andrew, get me out of here. I see nothing but ghosts all night. All right, night. all right, all right. That makes two of you, huh? Yes, two of us. I know that you won't believe me, that the lies my husband tells will win. But we've seen some terrible things these last few hours. Mrs. Barton, your husband probably faked all this mud on your slippers, bits of red-hot iron flying about, all that sort of thing. And the shadow of Diana, the moon goddess. Uh, some curious trick of the light, Mrs. Barton. And the ghost of the old abbot. Probably your wrought-up imagination. I promise you I don't believe your husband, madam. Then you'll protect me from it. Arrest him. Your husband killed Mrs. Flowers. How did you know that? He told me that Mrs. Flowers had been strangled when I first questioned him. Now, no one could have known that then. No one who hadn't seen the body. Oh, it's all so horrible. Well, it's over for you, Mrs. Barton, I promise you. Your husband was found dying in the old wine cellar by two of my men this morning. Dying? Aye, perhaps it's best this way. I'd hope for a confession from him, but he only babbled some of his nonsense about uh, Diana. He must have believed it all. I've never seen a man look so terrified. I don't know what the coroner will say, but if you ask me, I think he died from terror. And the goddess spared me. Mrs. Barton, you had a stronger power than your husband. What do you mean, Beatrice? You protected me. Took me into your room. Maybe you suspected me even then. You saw I was frightened. Anyone would have done the same. Well, I'm only a country girl. But all the same, I saw what I saw. And I remember where it says... And the greatest of these is charity. Well, well, well. So the spirit of Don Barton is in the ancient wine cellar, lying among the spirits, as it were. Must be the only public house where the host is a ghost. <laughs> to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present The Creaking Door. <laughs> <laughs>